This lecture looks at the solo model with technology included. It's the third uh, one in this series after we cover some of the overview of what kinds of models you could have. So this is the only one of two that we're actually going to cover explicitly. In this case, we're going to cover sort of the simplest form and let A, our technology parameter, just increase exogenously. So we want to look at how we include that into the model. It turns out pretty simply. So first of all, um, we could have population growth, but let's just assume that population growth is zero. So n hat is zero, which means l hat is zero. So population is growing at zero rate, so your labor force is growing at zero rate too. That way we just focus on technology and not other stuff. Where does technology show up? Well, in our Cobb-Douglas production function in terms of workers, output per worker, technology, capital per worker, and the um, capital's output, share of output, alpha. Now, technology shows up right here. So what we want to look at is this growth rate now being positive. So we'll let it be something like G, where G is greater than zero. G could be any number, 3%, 2%, 5%, whatever you want. But it's something greater than zero when we want to add technological growth. A couple of things to note. The biggest change is we modify the capital accumulation equation. Accumulation equation now becomes the change in the capital stock per worker is S times this, which is our savings rate times output, which is our total savings or total investment in this economy. And when we just had the basic model, we had delta K, but now we add delta plus G times K. Very similar to what we do when we add population, we get delta plus N, and if we had population here, we would have delta plus N plus G times capital. In steady state, this is going to be zero, which means our investment must equal this in steady state, which means that's what's required to keep the capital stock per worker constant. Now, why is this? Again, our investment has to go not just to cover depreciation, but we have to add capital because of our technological development. So this could be, you could think of it as the upgrades to your capital and your computer systems just as new versions of software come out. You could think of it as the other capital expenditures you have, you have to put in an internet system once internet's invented. Um, so it's not just enough to maintain your capital stock and offset depreciation like repainting it, redoing the walls, redoing the um, carpet, but you now also have to upgrade it by adding telephone lines, adding computer stations, adding more plugs, adding um, more electricity, all kinds of things. You have to divert some of your output, additional output, to account for that kind of thing. What does it look like? Again, just like adding population, we're just going to add this over here. So I'm not going to put in all the curves, but we can see that we get a lower steady state level of capital stock. Why is that? There are really two reasons. One of them is this, why we lower the steady state capital stock. One is this, more resources. Uh, go to GK in addition to Delta K. So we have to add extra resources from production that go back into that. That leaves less resources to go just back into um, extra production itself. Two, we can do less with more. 
or we can do more with less. We need less capital and labor to get the same output now. That's a Y, not an X. Right? Technology meant that for this capital stock, we get more out for the same capital. So we actually can cut back a little on the capital stock and get the same output out. And this is growing consistently over time. So we have more and more technology and can do more and more with the same amount of capital and labor. So we actually need a little bit less of it just to maintain ourselves. Again, the focus here is on what we have to do to be in steady state where the capital is constant. The more technology grows, the less we have to do to maintain that capital stock because we can do more with less. So fundamentally, these are the only modifications we'll see in the evaluation section of the models that the effect of this is that we get steady state GDP per capita growth, and that's why we actually care about it. But incorporating it into our model really just means adding that.